Hey, good evening, Augusta Nation. Thank you for joining me on the ride home. And it has been a fantastic Tuesday. Really loving the fall here in Augusta, Georgia. It feels kind of like a mini spring sometimes. We got up to 70 something degrees this afternoon. It was a little cool this morning, about 48, but really do enjoy the fall here. It's a great time to work, be outside. And uh, as far as growth for the company goes, as y'all know, I am the estimator. Things do slow down around this time of year. And what we do, we have something called a one-click estimate. Right now we're using Service Autopilot and it's, you know, it really doesn't matter the type or the brand, as long as you have a CRM that holds all of your data and allows you to organize your clients, things like billing, scheduling, and things of that nature. But one of the cool things that Service Autopilot does have uh, is the ability to create a, a one-click estimate document. So it's kind of like an automated deal where, you know, we, for instance, it's time of the year, it's fall, you've got leaves falling, uh, debris collection, and, you know, just things, tasks that you would do during the winter, uh, fall and winter. So predominantly debris collection, but we'll do things like, uh, you know, make sure uh, the beds are weeded, sticks are picked up, things of that nature, the hard surfaces are blown. And so since the, the lead flows kind of slowed down, I'm not marketing at the moment. Uh, Mike Andes does talk about strategy and learning about that. You know, you want to market uh, to solve a problem. And if there's no problem to solve, your, your uh, cost per lead is gonna be really high. You know, you don't want to market grass service when the grass has stopped, you know, is not growing anymore. Uh, your lead cost will be exorbitant. You probably won't get that many leads anyways. So what we did, we got a database, a little over 3,000 clients, or I'm sorry, leads, not all clients, but people that have requested an estimate may never have gotten work for us. We still have their data, uh, the ability to market to them. So what I did this morning is I've do filters so I filtered out all of our active clients and some other filters like we've tagged some people of do not market to people that have requested not to be marketed to you don't want to send them uh, an email you want to send them any content any marketing material because that would you know it, it would uh, disturb them and make them mad you don't want to have that kind of you don't want to send something to somebody that doesn't want to receive it so this morning I think it was a little, a little over 2,500 emails maybe 2600 emails that we sent out just a simple message uh, it was uh, had a nice image on it about fall cleanups or the fall is coming and on there she said hey we are offering services for this time of year leaf to leaf removal uh, i think it had max the mascot raking some leaves uh, leaf removal debris collection and then click here and we'll schedule you an estimate this week so you know, I think within the first couple hours, about 700 people had opened up the email. And out of that, I've, I've now scheduled 35 estimates uh, so far. So tomorrow, I think I've got 24 on the board. We'll see if I can get them all done. And um, yeah, so, you know, low, uh, as far as the leaf, like I said, it was low. We're not marketing anymore. We're not spending marketing dollars. So it's just something that we can do a tool in our basket uh, to reach out to our database and try to grab uh, some work from people that we've, we've already been in contact with. You know, we might have missed a quote on something, maybe we'll get it this time. So i um, excited to see what, what transpires. And then if you've been listening and, and heard me talk about doing Christmas decor, Christmas lighting and reads, we did do, I think about 13 estimates. We ended up getting uh, three people that accepted and then we were gonna do my house. We we ran the, the cost for everything, did a you know a profit analysis, and with shipping and everything, we would have barely uh, broke even. So we contacted everybody that had accepted, uh, all three of them, and let them know, you know, let them know the true story of it. Like, hey, this is our first time. We didn't get enough uh, buy-in to do it this year, but we're gonna start in July next year. Uh, marketing for that so we can get a nice list 
of at least 20 to 30. So that's kind of a bummer. I'll have to get out there on uh, on the roof, do my own lights this year and reeds. So that was a little bit of a bummer, but can't really do anything, uh, you know, if you're not going to make money doing it. This is a business. So until next year, I will still be the one decorating my house. And so if you've listened a little bit this week, um, this Monday meeting, I talked to the difference, talked to the team about the difference of finding your purpose in life versus your passion. And the week before that Monday, I handed out goal sheets just to try to get the team to start thinking about their future, about their career, and what's important to them. And you know, I've been, as far as searching for my purpose and trying to challenge myself to be a better version of myself for several years now. Um, you know, I've been really focused on trying to find that thing that God put me on this earth for. And I feel like I'm on the path and I feel that I am living a life that is directed by God. Uh, do I fail on that path? Uh, yeah, a, a lot. Uh, but I do feel like I'm on the path. I feel like I'm going in the right direction even when I don't know where that path goes, if that makes any sense. I feel good about where I'm going. I know that uh, I'm, I'm where God wants me to be. And I think that as far as from a Christian standpoint, finding your purpose um, is important to, to ask God what that is and ask God to lead you. Um, I'm still working on identifying it, putting it on paper, and describing it. I feel like I'm doing it. I've got the feeling of the purpose. Uh, but as far as identifying it, I've got a few characteristics or maybe just a few rough draft versions. Let me get a little light on the subject here. Let's see. That'll work. So, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm living in, you know, as far as being involved in business, uh, it's something that that I, it's not, I don't know if it's just the business. I do enjoy that aspect. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of like a, a very serious game, but it's, it's challenging. I enjoy it. I think I enjoy the building process. I enjoy the actual process of it. Um, not just the, you know, uh, what you can get out of it. I enjoy the growth of it, the growth of of the people that are involved in building a business, because you're not going to build something, you know, substantial just by yourself or with just just a couple people. So, you know, now that the business has gotten to a level of, you know, we'll do a little over a million dollars, but the growth dynamic of it, in order for the mission to succeed, of getting to 20 locations, that's going to involve the growth of, you know, 20 people of as far as leaders, emerging leaders, 20 people that are, that are going to go from, most of them are going to come from the field, uh, out there performing the work, mowing the grass, picking up debris, uh, spraying lawns, things of that nature. They're going to build their leadership skills, their communication skills, learn about business, and they're going to be able to take, them, take their financial ability to provide for them and their family and you know, multiply that by, by three or four times, which I think that is that's absolutely huge, but it's not gonna come easily. It's gonna come by doing hard work, deep work, learning about themselves, and trying to find out what their purpose is. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. And as far as, you know, the, the results of why I do what I do, what I'm going for, what I'm, what I'm striving after is I'm really, you know, I really have this calling to have true freedom. And I define that as being able to do what, what you want with who you want, when you want for, for as long as you want. And, you know, that can be traveling the world with your significant other. It can be reaching people, helping people, giving more than you could ever have thought that you could possibly give and for me that comes you know with uh, true financial freedom so not not saying that I would ever not want to be in business but to not have to do it uh, not have to uh, 
uh, create and uh, for to fulfill my financial needs. So for me, I put a number on the table. I put $10 million. That's my target. I know that I could invest that money and, you know, not that I would ever not want to work or create, um, but I wouldn't have to. So that's my, I guess the intermediary goal uh, of the purpose is, is getting to that level. Um, but the whole game of business and the involvement of being able to be a small part in, in another person's uh, personal and financial growth, spiritual growth, uh, is is super engaging to me. So I'm still trying to figure it out, piece it all together so I can explain it better. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to feel like I'm on God's path and I'm more on the way to being able to identify my true purpose. So I challenge you out there to uh, focus on thinking about your purpose, not in the terms of necessarily um, if you can find your purpose in, in your work, great. But I think it's I think it's bigger than that. Uh, but so we got something exciting coming up Thursday. One of our team members is going to lead the Thursday meeting, and so super excited to see what what the topics are, what they bring up, and, and just to hear their voice um, in the meeting. Uh, appreciate everybody that has listened. Thank you for taking your time with me on the way home. And I hope that y'all are having a great start of your week. And we will talk tomorrow. Have a great night.